Greetings guys, gals and non-binary pals and welcome back to another video. I hope that you are well and I hope that you are fighting because there is a lot to be fighting for. As usual there will be a link in the description to the page on my website with a bunch of petitions, donations, emails to send to MPs, etc, etc. Today I wanted to sit down and do something a little bit different. This may come as a little bit of a shock to you, but uh, I am queer. I know, shocking. I'll We'll take a moment to let it sink in. No, but because of that, uh, I get a lot of questions all the time from a lot of young gays sort of asking about coming out, asking for advice. And so I thought that I would sit down and make a video. Um, so that is what I'm going to do today. I have done one of these before. I will link it. It's titled, How to Know If You're Gay. <laughs> and so this is, I guess, part Two, I am someone who's been very, very fortunate with my queer experience in which I've not really spent much time questioning or thinking. I never really had to come out. Um, that's why I don't use a label for myself. I never really felt like I had to and I've never really experienced much homophobia or anything before and a lot of people ask me questions about like how to deal with homophobia and how to come out. Since I am unable to speak from experience on those things, I went to Instagram to ask you for your questions and what you wanted advice for as well as asking others there to give their advice on those specific topics. So this is advice from a bunch of gays <laughs> and myself included and I hope that it is able to help some people, I hope that it's able to answer some of your questions, and I hope that it, that you, that you feel validated by it, and yeah, so that's, that's really what we're here to do today. We'll go over some questions, we'll go over some advice, and we'll just, we'll just have a bit of a chat, because I know that it's a really hard experience for a lot of people. So one of the most common questions I get is sort of, you know, figuring yourself out, how do you know? How do you find your label? How do you distinguish romantic, sexual, platonic, feelings. And that is a very complicated question, but I understand why that's such a struggle, because comp het, right? Heteronormativity is so strong and it really does make you question a lot. I still struggle with it myself. The most important thing is remembering that your label, if you choose to have one, is allowed to change. You can identify as bisexual and then later realize that you're actually heterosexual or you're actually a lesbian or gay or asexual. And that is totally, totally okay. Especially since a lot of people feel like, you know, you want to know who you are when you're quite young. So a lot of people in their teens will be like, this is who I am. And then later realize that that isn't actually a reflection of who they are. And that is okay. And I think that that is the most important thing, is that a lot of people invalidate themselves in their identities. And time changes, you change, and that is fine. You figure yourself out in your own time. There is no rush to know who you are. A lot of us don't know who we are. <laughs> I don't really know who I am. I'm still figuring myself out every day. I change like the wind. I am a different person every few months. I just shed my skin and refresh. Don't invalidate yourself for not knowing. And in terms of finding a label that suits you, I know a lot of people feel pressure to find something and I know a lot of people find solace in having something because then you feel like you're a part of something and that you're normal and that there are other people like you, which is the importance of labels and why labels are so so great for so many people but I also know that a lot of people feel pressure to choose a label even if they don't feel like any of them work for them. Uh, that's why I personally identify as queer. I for a long time didn't identify as anything. If you ask me my sexuality I just said I like who I like and that's the end of. I'm Savannah, I like whoever I want to like, I don't really care. A lot of people put labels on me. The most common when I said that was, oh, so you're pansexual. And no, <laughs> I'm not. That's not how I identify. That's not a word that I feel fits me. It doesn't sit right with me personally. And that's okay. So just know if you don't have 
something that fits with you. You don't have to have one. I only started using queer probably sometime last year, to be honest. Probably the beginning of 2020. Uh, I didn't know queer was like a self-identifying term. I didn't know that that was a term that was used. And then I kind of saw a few people who used it to identify the community, um, sort of like how we use gay now, like like I called you all baby gays, uh, where it's a label that isn't a label. And I like that um, because it is saying that I'm part of the community, I'm not alone, I am queer with everyone and I also didn't have to choose something that felt confining to me, if that makes sense. That's sort of just my take on you're able to choose whatever label you want and it's allowed to change or you don't need one at all. And that's totally fine. The other thing along these lines that I get asked a lot is how do you know if you like are attracted to them or you platonically like them? And that's something I think everyone struggles with, not even just queer people, although particularly queer people. I struggle with this a lot myself. It's that do I want to be her or do I want to be with her? And it can be really difficult to distinguish. I don't really entirely have the answer for you because I struggle with this one myself. I think it's a matter of just going with it and seeing what happens, but chances are if you're questioning if you like them, you there's a chance that you do because with my friends, I don't ever question attraction to them. I'm just like, yeah, this is my friend. And I never am like, but do I actually like them? There is usually a distinguishable difference in them. So I just say, if you think that you like them, see how it goes. <laughs> someone asked, can I be romantically attracted to someone without being sexually attracted to them? And the answer to that is yes. You can experience sexual and romantic attraction separately. You can be pan-romantic and asexual. So you are interested in pursuing romantic relationships with anyone, but you aren't, don't experience sexual attraction. And that is totally valid, totally fine. And you can also have that the other way around. You could be heterosexual and aromantic, where you will pursue sexual relationships or feel sexual attraction towards people of the opposite gender, but you don't have any interest in pursuing people romantically. Or heterosexual, biromantic, bisexual, heteroromantic, it, whatever combination works for you, that's totally valid and that's totally okay because they are different levels of attraction. They are different feelings. I, for a period of time, I tried to explain my sexuality to my ex where I drew it on like a graph. And so I kind of did like a line and I was like, this line, this, this is sexual attraction and this is romantic attraction. And then these are like the different genders and I was like so my level of sexual attraction versus romantic attraction for this gender versus this gender because there was a period of time where it was different um where I experienced stronger romantic attraction for women but stronger sexual attraction to men but then I later realized that that is just because I am intimidated <laughs> by women <laughs> And that leads quite well on to my next question. Dating queer AFAB people who are experienced and being an inexperienced queer AFAB person yourself. So this is something I struggle with a lot. I'm much more experienced with AMAB people than I am with AFAB people. And so that's something that makes me anxious in pursuing relationships with other AFAB people, particularly who are experienced with other AFAB people, if that makes sense. It's something that's an insecurity for myself as well and is really scary. It's a scary thing um, and I understand that and I think the most important thing is to just communicate. I talk about it all the time but communication is the most important thing and most of the time people understand we've all been there you know, it's there's always a first time uh, and you'd be surprised at the amount of people who are also inexperienced because a lot of people experience internalized homophobia and compet for a very, very long time. And there are a lot of people who are like around 
my age and a lot of my viewers age who haven't had their first queer encounter it's not uncommon people will generally understand that and be willing to help communication is important anyway every time you have a new relationship with someone it's going to be different and you can compare it to your first time because everyone is different everyone likes different things so you need to communicate what you want regardless of whether it's your first time or not you have to remember that and although it is scary especially if you have anxiety like myself you just have to flip it and think if it was the other way around i would be willing to talk to them and communicate and it would be totally fine you know another thing i get asked a lot is about coming out and i've talked about this a couple times before i have a whole podcast episode about it uh but it's before most of you were here so i will talk about it again the most important thing when it comes to coming out is making sure you are safe there's a lot of pressure around people coming out and people feel like they have to when they figure out their labels and they figure out that who they like who they're attracted to or aren't attracted to and i just want to let you know that you do not have to come out and there's no time limit on that at all a lot of people come out much later in life and that is totally okay some people don't come out at all and that is also okay it's a really scary thing for a lot of people and sometimes it's just not safe to do so and if it isn't safe then i recommend not coming out and as awful as that is and as much as you would like to live your authentic self your safety is the most important thing i would say in terms of when to come out do it when you feel safe if you live in a house with people who are homophobic and who you know won't accept you wait until you can leave if you are unsure as to how they will react maybe drop hints sort of come home one day and say hey my friend came out as blank today and see how they react to that and i think that that was something that a few people dropped as advice on instagram and i think that that's a really smart way to go about it that sounds like a very effective way to do it make sure that you have somewhere to go like a friend's house or a trusted family member's house after you do it so you have a place to get away if it's overwhelming have friends on call have somewhere to go make plans just make sure that you are able to take care of yourself both mentally and physically because it can be really hard and it can be really scary and i don't think that's fair if it is a situation in which you aren't accepted um if it's by family members that you live with and can't get away from don't bring it up again just leave it because it could put you in a position that damages your mental health your physical health what be it just avoid it until you can leave and if it's friends and your friends don't accept you drop them <laughs> throw the whole friend away you don't need them it's not worth it it's not worth being around those people and that is something that people ask as well is how to deal with it when you lose your friends over coming out it's a really sad thing that you know losing friends is really really awful but the beautiful thing about living in the world of technology is that there are so many online communities where you can find people who are like you who will love you who will accept you such as i hope you feel safe here i hope that i'm able to make you feel safe and although i don't know you personally and you don't know me just know that i love and accept you for who you are and i hope that that helps validate you in any way i've personally found a lot of solace in online communities <laughs> i have always found a lot of comfort in online communities and although it hasn't been for feeling not accepted for my sexuality there are other things that i i wouldn't be alive <laughs> if it weren't for the friends that i made online and the support that i have received from people online and a lot of that for me comes from 
stan accounts. I I used to run like a five star stan account when I was a teenager and that was a place where I found so many like-minded people and I made a lot of friends and they helped give me confidence and feel accepted because I didn't have any friends in real life and having people online that I knew cared about me and who I cared about really helped me through a difficult time. Right now, I've kind of turned to that in this period of isolation where we can't have friends. It's really, really difficult, right? Like. I moved to a new country and then as soon as I got here, we went into lockdown. I haven't had the opportunity to make friends and it's really hard to find motivation to make friends if you can't act on that, if you know what I mean. Um, so recently, myself and Kat have found, you know, an online community at the moment for myself that is Stray Kids. If you have been paying attention, you would have seen my descent into this group. Uh, but at this period of time, they're bringing me a lot of joy and a lot of comfort and helping me through my terrible mental health at the moment. And I think that there's something really beautiful about that. And I do really recommend that. And that's why you see a lot of stands are queer. A lot of queer people have stan accounts and are a part of these like subcultures online because it's finding people with things in common and a place where you can feel accepted. And although there are really terrible sides to stan culture, there is a lot of beauty and community there. And I don't see that many people talking about it on YouTube. So many people always talk about the negative side of like K-pop stands and how awful stan culture is and I have to I agree partially but I have to disagree with a lot of that as someone who comes from it um let me know if you want me to do a video about stan culture because I have so much to say like stan culture from the perspective of a stan let, let me know if you want that anyway that's like really off topic online communities are a beautiful beautiful thing and on that I had a few people asking how do you date in a homophobic area and a lot of responses to that were online dating or do the like stereotypical like lesbian thing of dating someone who lives really far away at the moment that's really all you can do we can't go out and meet new people so online dating is like an excellent way to do it, an excellent way to meet people and build relationships with people and you can plan to meet somewhere outside of your homophobic area at some point and just have it be special and I know that that's very different and very difficult to maintain and if that doesn't work for you just make sure that you're safe. You can try pass it off as being friends and just going to cafes together, going to a movie together and just keeping physical contact off limits when you're out in public just to remain safe and spending time in each other's houses, booking a hotel room, whatever works for you, as long as you're prioritizing your safety, then that's fine. And if you are in a whole like country where being queer is punishable in any form, I would say just don't. As awful as it is and as much as you want to live your authentic life, I I personally don't think it's worth risking your health uh, and your safety. If you have family members that you know will accept you, maybe talk to them, invite friends over to your house where it's safe to be, but just be careful and when you can, if you can, leave so you're able to live as your authentic self elsewhere but I also know that moving countries can be very scary and very difficult and isn't possible for everyone and I'm sorry that I cannot be of more help for that I just want you to be safe and to look after yourself and that's really the only advice I can give for that those those are the main questions that I get asked as well as like sex education questions I do have a whole video about AFAB on AFAB uh, sex. If you want to watch that, I will link it. It's my lesbian sex education video. I had a bunch more questions, um, but I am running short on time and my camera is about to die. So uh, I will leave it here. Let me know if you want a part two. Comment some questions if you have any. Comment some advice, stories that you think might help young queers. 
um, that would be super appreciated. And yeah, follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi. I post all the time asking for things like this. I know this is really different, but I hope that it is able to help people. I hope that it has validated some people. Remember to look after yourselves and to stay safe and remember that you are valid and that I love you and that I support you. And so does everyone here. Everyone here loves and supports you and I hope that you are able to find some safety and some solace in that. A massive thank you to my Kiwi Fruit channel members whose names are up on the screen right now. And a big thank you to my channel member of the day, the funny Depresso. I love and appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to become a channel member, you get my videos a day early as well as 10% off my shop where you can buy hoodies and mugs with this cute little design on it. It's all fair trade and a sustainable as possible. Uh, so yeah, that would be amazing. You'd be helping me out a ton and I would really appreciate it. Follow me on Instagram, the queer kiwi, and Twitter, that queer kiwi. If you like, you can challenge yourself and try find my Stray Kids Stan account. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. <laughs> and when you close your eyes